Give me those stems. Give me the give me the stems. I'm mastering from stems. Stem mastering. This is a video I've always wanted to do, and Colt Caparoon beat me to the punch, including it in one of his videos of the worst music advice ever. He's a, he's a mixing engineer, and I get where he's coming from. However, I think there's some context that's been missed out. What Colt says here isn't anything controversial, isn't anything wrong as well. I think he makes some really good, valid points. It is a bit of a interesting topic where the lines can get blurred between what is mastering, what is mixing, and also respecting the integrity of other people's work and not undermining it. I'm going to film my reaction, I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then we'll move from there. STEM mastering. Number one, STEM mastering. Now for those of you that don't know, STEM mastering is when you would send a drum stem and a guitar stem and a bass stem and a keys stem and a vocal stem and whatever, all separated out to your mastering engineer. They call this STEM mastering. So normal mastering, you would just send uh, a left and right, a stereo track, just the mix. That's what you send to a mastering engineer, but there's this new fad called STEM mastering, and uh, this is nonsense. The idea that a mastering engineer would rebalance the elements within my mix because I apparently don't know what I'm doing, or, or because I didn't mix it good enough, like, that's crazy. He's right. It is nonsense for a mastering engineer to be undermining a mixing engineer, producer, and artist, their decisions they've made in mixing. And I think... STEM mastering sort of is attractive sometimes to people because it looks like a more superior option because the mastering engineer has that autonomy, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Mastering is about representing the mix in its best light. There is a justified reason to master from stems, and I'll explain why. Colt, seasoned mixing engineer and producer, knows what's coming out of his studio, confident in his work, and he can give that to his mastering engineer knowing that that will be able to go through the mastering process and exit sounding great. Reality is, every every mix that comes into a mastering studio has to be quality controlled, has to be listened to over. And I'm sure if Colt got notes back from a mastering engineer saying, hey, did you notice the dropout in the left speaker in verse 2? Or did you notice the hum here or the resonance here? Colt would be able to fix it like that. No worries. However, there are clients of mine who are mixing their own records. There are people who are just un trying to understand their tools so they can express their creativity, but they might not have the same comprehensive knowledge of what they're doing as Colt does. So as much as I try to guide these people, give them feedback, sometimes there might be a particular, a particular song where the bass is just boomy in a certain section, and I can help them represent their mix in the best light by having access to that individual stem to make sure it plays back coherently and nice on the final master. If your mastering engineer is requesting stems and, and won't master a regular stereo two track, fire them and get someone else. I get this. If the mastering engineer is just saying, hey, give me those stems, give me the, give me the stems, there's something wrong there, straight away, because that just calls th to them undermining your mixing decisions and the whole creative team who's worked on that, their decisions to pass this on and say, this is good to go to mastering. And mastering is about communication, and unless a mastering engineer has communicated with you a genuine need or reason that is otherwise outside of the mixing engineer's control to have autonomy over those stems, then there should be no reason for them to be asking for them in the first place. For me, it's about trying to address key concerns. I try and avoid stem mastering at all costs because it can throw a spanner into the work. So for me, make sure I listen to the mix before mastering. Make sure I provide feedback if necessary. I quality control it before the day of mastering, making sure nothing has slipped through. That way, when it comes to mastering the record, everything's been addressed. Now, if I've requested something or somebody's uncertain about something, then maybe it might be a discussion for stem mastering, but it's not always my go-to. And I do agree with Colt here. If they're just asking for stems off the bat, fuck them off. We might as well just get right into the drama of it. If your mastering engineer won't master without stems, Get rid of them. Get someone else. Because that's not a real mastering engineer. STEM mastering is not mastering. STEM mastering is mixing. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't pay... I agree with him here. STEM mastering definitely blurs the lines. But STEM mastering, he's right, is not mastering. It is a technique, though, we can use during mastering if needed, if it is appropriate. It's just not something you resort to as saying this is mastering. No, it's a technique sometimes we need to use in mastering in order to carry something across the finish line. If we make a minor tweak and it helps present the intended mix, that original mix in its best light, if we can help carry that message across of that original mix, then it's a technique of mastering. It is, it is a mastering in and of itself that is just something people should default to access.
And the reason being is you just don't want to undermine your mixing engineer. You don't want to undermine good old Colt because he's right. You, you you don't need somebody to tell you your mix is shit if you've signed off on it and everybody else has signed off on it. You shouldn't have somebody undermining those decisions. The reason why STEM mastering works sometimes is because you can access information with less compromise during the mastering stages. Somebody to do this for you. I'm not saying that you shouldn't send your stems to someone and have them finish your mix for you, but you should not do it under the assumption that this is mastering because it's not. You're paying somebody to finish your mix. Colt shares a really good mixing engineer and producer's perspective on the topic of STEM mastering, or mastering in general. It's not there to undermine your decisions, it's there to support them. And unless STEM mastering has a reason to support your decisions in the mixing process, to help you carry that mix as it was intended through to the final master, sounding great, sounding as it intended, I think is, is, is the better term to use, um, then you should really question what the intentions of the mastering engineer are and if that's going to be beneficial or conducive to helping you along on your project.